since we are importing stuff, I think random numbers are a fun thing to talk about. So far, we said how computers are so deterministic, right? There are all kinds of rules. We tell it what to do. It does exactly what we tell it to do. But life is not deterministic. Life has randomness in it. We are all kind of random, right? So first question, and I'm going to pause. I didn't make a poll for this. It would have been a good, good, good question is what is randomness? Oh, okay. Um, I'm actually not, not sure. It's not something I've grappled with in, in philosophy. Okay, okay. Have you heard, but have you, you say we have used it in common language. He's behaving randomly or something like this. We say it, right? Unpredictable, in, in, I guess. That unpredictable. Doesn't follow okay. any pattern that doesn't, you okay. easily see. Oh, yes. Okay. Now, if we use this definition, it's unpredictable and doesn't follow a pattern. Suppose I show you something. Suppose I show you a collection of characters and I ask you, is it random? What will we do? We will look for uh, patterns, right? We will, yes. Yeah. Human yes. beings, we like to find some pattern. But the question is, if I find if I find no pattern, should I give up and say it's unpredictable and random, or is there some? Is it an unanswerable question to determine if something is random? I guess yeah. unanswerable. Or, it's well, a it's a tricky one. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So it turns out the randomness is intuitively easy for us to start off saying our oh, random. I understand. But to precisely say, how can I recognize something is actually random? Or it's something that the pattern is there, but I cannot recognize the pattern, right? That's a very tough question, okay? So uh, we have used this in another place. I don't want to use that particular quotation, but sometimes when we cannot come up with explicit rules, we say, <clears throat> you will find it, you will recognize it when you see it. <laughs> so randomness is one of those things, right? You will recognize it when you see it. Okay, so what do we do? So now immediately I want to show you how to use randomness. Okay, so the first, when I'm we're going to do a nice exercise immediately after. So important, you just import random numbers. So I imported it. I want to get some number of random numbers. So I put a count here. Okay, so let's say I want 100 random numbers. Just now I can store them in a list. So we're going to use the list right away. So I take create a blank list. And now I'm going to say, for range count so that will go that loop will go through 100 times for i in range count i go to the random number library and say can you give me a random integer so this is the key function here rand int right it gives me random integers and rand int takes a start value and a stop value so the integers will be between 0 and 1 and random integers between 0 and 1 are interesting because 0 and 1 can be thought of as heads and tails and if I use this, I can make a coin flipper, right? I can use this function to create a coin flipper. In fact, I've done it below. So we we'll look at it in a second. Okay. Does everybody understand how random, random, rand int and random numbers are going to be generated here? Any question there? No questions. Okay. So I'll proceed. Okay. So the important point here is that it's very easy to do this. And let's print it out and see what happens. So if I print it out, I have 100 numbers. I can print it out, right? So you see, I get 100 zeros and ones. No problem, right? Do you see a pattern or not? Anyone see a pattern here? Okay, so I'm going to make an important statement. Two important statements. One is concrete. One is little philosophical, okay? Concrete statement is, this has been generated by a program. This, this random which we imported is a program. That means it must have specific rules. So if you open up that file and read, how does it create random numbers? There must be a pattern in there. So actually this is an example of what, what is called a pseudo random number. There are rules, but we can't detect the rules, at least not without opening up the file. Okay. So all of programming 99.9% is made up of pseudo random numbers. They are generated by complicated algorithms that hide all the patterns. By the way, there's a very interesting, this is a philosophical comment. There's a very interesting test that we do on humans. You ask a human, can you write down a random set of zeros and ones and make you write a uh, hundred is a long list, but you make you write hundred, right? You get hundred students, students, you can always give them assignments, they write zeros and ones and make it random, right? It turns out that humans will make the list more random than true randomness. You understand what I'm saying? If I had any source of true randomness, 
like for example the noise that a radio when you have radio static or something right you have some radio station that's not tuned it makes some noise if i take the noise and convert it into some string it will be random it's truly random that noise is coming from the atmosphere or something but if you compare the list that a human has made or if you compare the list that a human has made against this random number generator the humans would have a lot more well ordered we'll try to make it more random than it needs to be so if you have the patience you can take some strings and you can see whether you are generating good random sequences or not how do we check if you are generating different than others or not you see here i have calculated so let's look at this a very nice piece of code immediately i can ask the question maybe you guys can all do this we have created i have created this list for you right it's stored in this variable called random numbers write a piece of code to count the ratio of zeros to ones you understand what i'm saying the list has zeros and ones in it so i want to count what fraction of the list is ones and what fraction of the list is zeros so take a moment the code is right there but just think about it and just run it and tell me if you have questions you understand the question by the way one key thing i will just make this comment a key thing malika is, said she didn't get it so ah good malika you yeah okay didn't get what malika the question okay okay what the question is very simple i have created a list it has random number it has zeros and ones in it so this list has 100 items in it some fraction of them are ones and some fraction are zeros right so let's say it's half and half if it's half and half that means 50% is ones and 50% is zeros or 60% is ones and 40% is zeros so calculate that fraction what percentage is ones and what percentage is zeros same as flipping coins 100 times and seeing like what how many heads and how many tails how many yeah, how many heads how many tails right yeah. so this is simulating the same experiment okay sorry kasandra asked the right question here by the way part of the skill of solving problems is asking questions right whenever we get serious about solving problems the first thing you do as soon as you hear a problem is you should have three questions make sure you refine it and clarify as much as you can then we can solve the problem anyway kasandra asked me this question what does len do len basically calculates the length of any list any list any string len is a very utility function in python anything that has more than one object in it you should expect to run len on it and get a count so shall i explain the code anyone has questions is the this code too compact you see i didn't write any big function or anything i did it in one line but now i use some uh, programming uh, power to do it so let me just explain it okay so what did i do i want to count the number of ones you can if you want to try this as a homework you can try to do using the count function but i did it in a clever way i said i will or oh, i think it's clever you tell me if it's clever i said i will sum all the elements in a list if i sum all the elements in a list and there's only zeros and ones what is the sum going to return me is it the number of zeros or the number of ones the, the sum of everything right sorry is the the sum of all the numbers not the count no no i'm saying if i do the sum what will it return but this is a very special list it has only zeros and ones in it it's like a trick puzzle a list has zeros and ones in it if i sum the list what will i get Ideally, uh, Vijay, I would think that it will be an addition, right, of all the ones. Yeah. So, so what is this number? Is it the number of ones in the list? Yeah, it will add all the number of ones. And so the answer is not just addition. It tells me exactly how many ones are there. Yes. Suppose I have a list of length hundred, and I have three ones in it. If I sum this list, I'll get three. Yeah. If I have ten ones in it, if I sum the list, I'll get ten. So I decided to use sum instead of count. I'm just showing you how the mind can work, right? one person can go and say how can i count when i sat down to write this i said i'll just use sum it's quick well you did this because you knew that there are only two possible values zero yes zero. correct i can do this in general if it was heads and tails i have to use count right or something for loop or something yeah so but i'm just i put it here to show you how sometimes if you know what you're doing you can do it in three different ways right and then you have to use it judiciously now see this program because i use sum when you all look at it you're like what is he trying to do why is he summing the list right so sometimes cleverness can break the communication but sometimes it can become a pattern and all of you can say you know what if i have zeros and ones and i want to find how many ones are there rather than counting if i don't have a count or i don't know how to use count i can just do sum okay so sometimes it can become a pattern now so i i do the sum and now i have to find so this tells me how many ones are there 
So now I have to find the fraction, the percentage. So if there are 10 ones in a list of 100, the next thing I know is how big is the list. And that is the len function. So len will tell me how big the list is. So I counted the number of ones and I divided by the length. That's my percentage. Yeah, but you knew the count in the beginning, right? You already mentioned it's 100. Sorry? You already knew the number of uh, you know elements that can be present. It's 100, right? It could be 100. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, your homework assignment. Do this with count. Okay? Do this with count. I'm just saying I was trying to explain to you that I felt instinctively I wanted to use sum. Don't ask me why. Right. As soon as I saw the list and I saw one, then I thought it was cute. I'm just sharing with you a real world programming situation, right? You, I might be your collaborator on a project. I'm going to use sum and you're going to come in and say, can you use count? Right? And then we're going to settle some way. Okay? But just try it out and you can do it both ways. Yeah. And there might be some deeper reasons. Count might be faster. Sum might be faster. Various reasons there. So ideally, we must take it into all of those directions to settle something. But at the end of the day, sum and count becomes a theoretical debate because it's only one line still, right? Unless there are performance implications, we don't need to, we don't need to. Um, yeah, uh, Cassandra, you asked uh, the mm -hmm. second print line. So the second print line is basically saying if 50, if 25% is ones, how many percent is zeros? It has to add up to 100%, right? So if I subtract the fraction of z of z, of ones from one that's all again okay. cleverness right i didn't do a count again i said i already know it so why don't i just subtract so you see what is happening here i use different ideas from mathematics here there whatever fractions additions ratios i do this is where the programming kind of suddenly expands right this is we have a finite list of commands and a big list of ideas and a bigger list of problems right so we can use small commands, but we can we can execute in many ways depending on which idea we get. So John, I just wanted to uh, illustrate something. Can you make count as ten and just run the program again? Yeah. So we can see how probability works in our life. Okay, so we run and you see percentage of ones and percentage of zeros. We got five five. Okay, uh, let's it. make it for twelve or like some other number. Let's yeah. run it. I mean, uh, yeah. Okay, so you can see the percentage of ones and zeros is 40% and 60%, right? And you're flipping coin and you would say that we'll get 50% of heads and 50% tails. So why it is 40% and 60%, right? Yes. Make it for, let's say six, count is equal to six. Yes, yes. Before you go further, I just want to say before I take Manish, but this is a very important, fun discussion. The fact that there's 40% and 60% is what humans say, oh, there must be a pattern. This is why people play slot machines. Right, they see 40% and 60% and say, oh, I know on Monday afternoon, it's going to give me 60% because I ran it and gave it 60%. If I play the slot machine 100 times, I'm going to win six out of 60 per 60 times, I'm going to win. It's really not true. It's completely random. There's no pattern here. It seems like there's a pattern. <coughs> and earlier when I told you, when I ask a human being to write this string, the human being will carefully arrange to make sure it's 50% every time. <laughs> but randomness has is not like that. And, 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 and so, yeah. So Manish, you will continue. Right, right. Uh, you can show it for another small number. Let's make it eight. And we yeah. can show again that probability, anything which is probabilistic, it doesn't show up when you do it few number of times. It's, it's coming up as 0.5, but yeah. like yeah. you but can, that, if you change the- Complete coincidence. It's coincidence. You can repeat the same count, right? Run it again, maybe it'll give you a different number. Yeah, yeah, it will give each time you run it, it'll give me a different number. If you can put seven or something. Yeah, so now, yeah, now we yeah. got something else. You got right? something different, right? But but very interesting point I want to make to you. Look at this. This is also an important point of random numbers, right? We think that random numbers cannot have long strings of ones like this. So if you generate a big randoms, you can play with this and see, make a list of thousand and see how the ones occur, right? Human beings will arrange. If, if I put one, one, then I had to put one zero. Right. And if I put two ones, I had to put two zero. They kind of try to arrange everything to be balanced out. Yeah. So John, but, I think we'll running out and I just quickly run it for what? 10,000 and then we can, or hundred thousand and then we can move. Uh, yeah, yeah. All I'm saying is play with patterns and see. And right? then you can see that probability only works when you do it many number of times. Yeah. So now we can, get almost get, no matter how many times you do, if you run, play something hundred thousand times, you get very close to 50%, which is the expected yeah. probability. Yeah. And this is why you don't win on slot machines. And the person who created slush machines always made sure that this percentage is in the favor of the house. 
But if I go with this logic to the roulette machine, I'll be bankrupt. <laughs> it's a whole discussion, the whole separate discussion about roulette, okay? But yes, yes, I just want to highlight where we use all these ideas, right? And in, in fact, I want to say many ideas and probability were created because they wanted to explain gambling practices of people. The idea of calculating ratios and odds and all that. That's why even the language says odds sometimes, odds of something happening because it's all gambling language. So it's a, I mean, yeah, I won't make any philosophical comment about gambling. Okay. Okay. Now let's do something fun. Okay. Uh, John, let's uh, move on to the next section. I think we are running uh, really, uh, we can, this can be, uh, if you think, if this can be a homework no, exercise. Fine. Yeah, actually, you know what? Uh, let me leave it as an exercise, but let me tell you what it is because not everybody knows what it is. Okay. So I will ask a question. How many people have to make a lot of decisions in their life? Or do we all have to make decisions in our life? We do, right? Is it easy to make decisions? No. Okay. So would it be nice if you had something that helped you make decisions? Yeah. So this is a, there's a toy that you can buy. It's called the eight ball. The toy has different decisions, outcomes in the toy. You shake it and it'll tell you what to do. Okay. So this program actually creates that toy in code. So I want a decision. So can somebody tell me something they want a decision? With? So this program asks, would you like help with the decision from the magic eight ball? Okay. Give me some decision. Shall I get a coffee? Okay. Shall I get a coffee? So if I say yes, it'll tell me what to do. Yeah. He says the outlook is good. Go get your coffee. Right. Then if I want a decision with something else, how is the, is the class going well? If I say yes, it's going to tell me some decision. Don't count on it. So it's funny. I had a I had a boss who had an eight ball on his table, and people would come to him for decisions all the time. And with a smile on his face, he said, "Let me ask the eight ball what to do." <laughs> and he shake it, and you know everyone starts laughing. So anyway, it's a fun toy to play with. Um, so but anyway, the code for the eight ball is here, and I'll just mention how does it work, so that you can read it and understand it, right? So all the options, all the decisions are here, so you can change it to your own language. If you want to play with your spouse or something, you could change it to your favorite language. There are uh, some number of options here that I, till I got tired, I wrote some options. Okay. You can put whatever options you want. Yes, no, maybe is three options. Funny messages, right? Concentrate and ask me again. That is also one decision, right? So you can put whatever messages you want. And this thing goes in a while loop. Remember I talked about while loops. Last time. So that's another moment to highlight how to use the while loop. So this while loop says, if it's not time to stop, keep on doing it. So that's why it goes on asking me. So when do I stop? When you say yes or no. So if, if you say yes, then it's time to stop. It returns false. If you say no, uh, sorry, if you, if you say no, it's time to stop. It returns true. Yes to stop. If you say yes, it means continue. So it returns false. Okay. Just walk through the logic. So there's just a simple while loop here. I want to show you how, how this code becomes very easy to understand. There's a while loop that says, do you need another decision or not? If you need another decision, it's going to try to give you an answer. How does it get the answer? It goes to the random number generator and says, give me a random number. And in this particular example, there are 18 different responses in my list. So that means there are only 18 different decisions you can get. So I take a random number between zero and 18. So it'll pick and from the list, anything, right? And then it goes into the list and it just pulls out that random number location. That's the message. And then displays it. <laughs> Rabinder says it doesn't work as well if choosing between two specific oh. options. Okay. And I will tell for two specific options, you put just yes and no, delete this list of 18 elements and you put yes and no, right? And now run it and you say, you'll get yes, no. You want three options. You put yes, no, maybe. And you ask the magic ball and it will randomly generate yes, no's and maybe. Cool, right? I just want to show you how we take something simple like random numbers and some pro programming idea and a while loop. And we got a nice little piece of functionality. You can play with it with your kids, right? Mommy, can I have a cookie? You say, okay, I'll ask the eight ball. The eight ball says no. Maybe you can only put no in that one, right? You can have another eight ball which says no all the time. These are all tricks you can do, okay? Uh, but it just gives us ideas for fun. Okay, so let's go to the next place. 